Hello and welcome. In today's episode, we're finally going to hook up the E34 to a real diagnostics machine. This new age garbage is worthless. This 2003 computer is equipped with a native RS232 port and that allows me to scan out the pre-OBD standard E34. In case you didn't know this already, all the newer cars from BMW can be read out by one of these mobile Bluetooth scanners that support all regular OBD platforms, but this old one is not available through that. This one uses an old OBD1 port, a 16 pin round port. It needs to be native, so in case you want to emulate it with a newer laptop, that doesn't work. I've heard on some forums that it works, but for me it didn't work, and I could not for the life of me get it to run with my newer laptop. On my E46 from the year 2000, it also uses a 16 pin connector, but also a normal OBD2 connector. Just the OBD2 connector from the cabin only allows to access the engine ECU and the 16 pin allows you to connect to all the other modules in the car. But this one needs to be through the 16 pin because it doesn't even have an OBD2 port. But first I'm going to show you what I'm trying to diagnose right now. I can't really adjust the injection pump because my dial gauge just always shows the wrong lift. And I have masks with the top part of the injection pump, so I need to set the minimum quantity of injection. I'm just going to get the car outside and then I'm going to show you how it usually starts. The car is stone cold and hasn't really been started today, so it is a proper cold start and it doesn't really want to start. So this is how the car starts right now. I'm just going to let it glow two or three times and then I'm going to show you how it starts because it's not fun. As you could see by this small starting video, the car still doesn't start right because I glowed five times and then still I had to turn it for three seconds or so before it really started. Uh, that's not normal because it isn't that cold outside, like maybe eight, 10 degrees C and it should really just start right away. So now we have the 16 pin to OBD2 connector hooked up. The RS232 port is hooked up to the OBD2 adapter and now I'm going to start up the PC and wait for 10 minutes because these old computers are slow AF. <laughs> As you can see, this puppy is still running Windows XP and now I'm going to start up INPA. As you can see, this is INPA version 3.01, which is, if I am correct, the last version to support full ADS activity. Now I'm going to connect the adapter. Now it shows battery is on and ignition is on, which is not true because the key is in my hand. So now I'm going to turn on the ignition. I hope this is just some weird error and not indicative that something's going wrong. And this is the perfect example how stuff never works out how you planned it. I've done a ton of research on every single forum there is. German speaking, French speaking, English speaking forums everywhere. And you will always find people saying that you just need an RS232 to OBD2 connector and then an OBD2 to the 16 pin or OBD1 connector. This is not true. I was always getting the same error codes and nothing worked. I couldn't even access any modules on the car. And now fast forward a week, I've got my tiny ADS interface and just a normal RS232 cable from female to male. Just plug that in the serial port, instantly fires up, everything works a charm. If you have a car pre-1996, chances are you're definitely going to need the tiny ADS interface because, because otherwise it just won't communicate with the car. Because every car pre-1996, so 1994 and backwards, are full ADS. And that's why you need the tiny ADS interface. You can just buy them online and then you have to follow the wiring diagram and get wires into the individual connectors. You have to look there with a flashlight because the numbers are hardly visible and then you can check and mix and match the pins. Be careful, this one pin that is lying open is there are two different possibilities of K-line. There's one 20 pin K-line and one 17 pin K-line. Mine has the K-line on pin 20, so I don't need the number 17 pin. And now with the car battery plugged in, the tiny S interface is already getting power. Now that we have in power up and loaded, we can read out the error codes. And here it says that the air intake temperature sensor has an issue and it says that the boost pressure is at 1071 HPA, which is hectopascal, and 1071 hectopascal is 1.07 bar, which is a bit more than atmospheric pressure, uh, so that is weird and I don't really know how to do some research with the error code. 
It says that the tamper mat, so cruise control has an error. My car doesn't have cruise control, which is also weird. And uh, it says uh, coolant temp is at minus 8 degrees, which is definitely not true. And that there uh, is a short in the system. I'm going to show you what that is. Another really interesting thing about Inper is status lesen at 5 life values. And we can go to analog values 1 and 2. We're just going to start with 1. And here you can see all the life values. Uh, this is the injection timing that's supposed to be, and that is what it is right now, measured in degrees on the crankshaft. The actual injection quantity, with that slider we can check the, inje uh, the minimum injection quantity from the pump top part. Hereby we can do the pump timing. PWG is Pedalweggeber. This is German and stands for throttle position sensor, if I'm correct. So the throttle potentiometer. Schieberweg soll and Schieberweg ist, I haven't figured out. FGR is Fahrgeschwindigkeitsregulierung and that is uh, related to the uh, cruise control. And that is weird because my car doesn't have cruise control, so I guess that's normal. And on the second tab, we can check the intake temperature. It says that right now it is 124 degrees, which is normal because the sensor is not connected. I changed that. Coolant temp, it says exclamation mark minus 8.4 and that is an error. I think the exclamation mark stands for error because it is not minus 8 degrees right now, it is around 7 to 8 degrees. And I can actually understand why that is. Now it says that it's supposed to be at 909 uh, idle speed and Atmosphärendruck HPA which is 9.6 bar, uh, 0.96 bar which is actually correct and Mengenangriff there is also a fault and I think this fault comes from this fault because the DDE uses the coolant temp to calculate other parts of the injection. Now I'm going to show you why I think there is an error on the coolant temp. In episode 2 when I got the car we changed this coolant temp sensor because it was leaking coolant from the actual sensor. I'm sorry if it isn't too visible on camera but there is blue oxidation from the coolant so there is no contact between the sensor and the sensor clip. We need to clean that. I have just bought some contact spray which is just some electrical cleaner and now I'm going to clean out the plug with a pick and this spray. Do you see these blue spots on the can? This is the residue that was stuck inside the sensor clip and I think that was what was disrupting the contact between those electrical parts. Now that we've cleaned the contact and the sensor, we can see if the error still persists. It still says minus 8, which is still wrong. No bueno. I think I'm gonna have to cut off the connector and then check how far the water went into the running loom and then just replace it from there. Uh, well, I'm just gonna cut off the connector and test with two individual pins if then it works. If not, I'm just gonna have to do some more diagnosis. If yes, everything is fine. Uh, I'm also gonna go upstairs and read what the error codes are. Now, part of the error code that I got were that there is a short in some part of the coolant temp sensor circuit. I know why and now I need to put the engine harness. This is part of the old connector. And as you can see, the blue stuff is old coolant. Since we found out in episode 2 that the temp sensor was literally leaking coolant, we replaced the sensor and we discovered that there was coolant left in the sensor clip. I now cleaned the sensor clip and had no difference. I then cut off the sensor clip and put on two wires and put them to the sensor. I don't know if you can see that, those two red wires. i still getting the same error code. So now I'm going to pull the engine harness, this part, and then try to redo it right here where I have more space. I hope I don't have to end up removing the whole engine harness because that would be a bad day. But yeah, this project just keeps getting worse and worse. To top things off, now after the pump rebuild, it just won't start. Like, I can crank it for 30 seconds, it won't start, like no matter what I try. I also get errors on the boost pressure sensors, so I'll probably renew that. And now I'm just trying to get the wire problem fixed so that I can finally start and drive this car because to be honest it's driving me nuts right now.
I'm sorry if this is picking up really bad on camera, but I tried removing all the hardened plastic and uh, even before I cut it, I could see that there were some wires poking out, so I really think that we now found the cause of this short. At least I hope so. And my bad if it isn't picking up because I can only zoom this far. <laughs> I have now repaired the cable up until the point where there was no visible damage. I just hope everything is fine. Now I'm going to put on the new connector onto the plug because uh, the old connector was completely toast. And uh, even though this is not the right way to repair this, I couldn't find another connector. I'm going to see if BMW still provides this one and I'm going to repair that correctly so that there is the right cable with the right connector because right now you have to know which cables go to what in order to pin it to the right positioning but yeah this is just a fix now I'm gonna hook it up hook up the battery hook up in power and then see if our error with the coolant temp still persists or not now that I've repaired the engine wiring loom I no longer have an error for the short in the coolant temp and the other four hours that were there are also gone, so they were probably rated to this short. Now we have no error codes, but the temperature reading on INPA for the DDE is still very much wrong. Now we can do some electrical diagnosis with a normal multimeter. First, I'm gonna unplug the ECU harness, and now I'm gonna check for continuity from this part, from the connector to the ECU cable. The pin where the temperature sensor signal goes to is pin number 53. So I can check right here, jam the probe into the sensor, hold it down and check on number 53. 0 0.5 ohms, really low. Another thing we can also do is check the resistance on the actual temperature sensor itself. This is the old DD temperature sensor. And on the new connector that is installed inside of the engine, I'm getting 3.5. And on the old one, I'm getting 3.6 and 3.5, so that's good. And when we now check the voltage at the connector with the battery contact in place and ignition on, and with it connected, we're getting exactly 5 volts, which is correct. And now I still continue with the diagnostics on the E34. I patched up some intermediate cables so that I could plug in the multimeter while uh, the sensor is attached to the clip. With the intermediate pieces I then measured 4.1 volts on the multimeter even if it should have been 3.5 volts. Now there is a 1000 ohm resistor in there and it read 35 degrees which is 15 degrees too low with 1000 ohms resistant, it should actually read around 50 degrees, so it is still 15 degrees too cold. That could be because somewhere in the ECU, there is more resistance coming to it, if I'm correct. And as always, if I'm saying anything wrong, or you think I'm doing something wrong, just leave it down in the comments, because then we can discuss if I'm actually stupid or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love hearing from you guys if you think I did something wrong, because that means I can improve. But anyways, that could mean that there is some oxidation inside of the ECU and now we're going to take it out and open it. I've already disconnected the battery a few minutes ago. I'm just going to wait to have any residual charge leaving the ECU so I don't fry anything accidentally because I already broke the fuse for the glow plugs because I shorted my intermediate wires against the glow plug from the coolant temp. Thank God the ECU still reads normal because otherwise I would have fried the ECU. And now we're going to open up the DDE to check for any oxidation or corrosion or anything that doesn't look normal and could interfere with the signal. Now that we've opened up the ECU, I just need to check everything if there's oxidation or anything. I need to open it up even more because there's two, two steps and then have to flip it over to actually see if there's something that's broken or not. I'll, I'll come back to you guys once I've found something. 
our ECU is back together. Unfortunately, there were no visible signs of corrosion or anything that could have caused this. So we're back to square one. I'm just gonna throw everything back together now and then I'm just gonna air out the ejector lines once more and hope that was the problem. So I don't know. So yeah, this diagnostic process has been uh, intense and unfortunately it hasn't led me anywhere. We found no explanation as to why the ECU is getting the wrong readout from the temperature. And yeah, that's no good. Even though unconclusive, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Also, a very special thank you to one of my Lithuanian subscribers who helped me out immensely with the electronic diagnostics on this project. This is not really my thing and he helped me enormously to speed through this process with some guidance of his own. Thank you so much.